Welcome at yet another video of the EEP10 model railway simulator. In the previous video I called it number 80, that was not true, that was number 79. This is number 80, not important but still. We have been looking at some Lua code to automate train traffic and that worked well. And what we try to accomplish in this video is to add something special and that is to be able to allocate a certain train or train type to a certain track on a station. And that is all possible uh, with the same code. All we need to do is modify our block and route table. So let's have a look at that. What we try to accomplish is this. We have here our station north and we have these uh, trains going counterclockwise they end up at station south and every train that is here at station south track 1 goes over here and can uh, be allocated to north 1, 2 or 3 that's the current situation and that worked well in the previous video but now what we would like to do is to simulate something special we have here a passenger train and we would like if, if there is a passenger train over here that it always goes to track 1, never to track 2 or 3. That's because here is a, a station, a virtual station, that uh, only allows passengers to get in and out of the trains at track 1. And then also with the cargo trains or freight trains, we, al we always want them to go to track 2 or 3. That's what we want to do. And what do we need to do? I have made a little to-do list, well, <laughs> a little. There's eight points, yes, don't be scared. Uh, luckily, uh, every point in itself is quite easy. The only task that we have is try to avoid to make mistakes. And it is quite easy to make a mistake. So let's have a look. Step one is to create EEP routes for passengers and cargo trains. Well, over here we have a route menu and we can do a route bearbeiten and there I can create a route well I had already done that so I need to first get rid of them and then I can show it again uh, personally I don't don't like the user interface of this this little route uh, window because I always hit OK when I should not I, I'm going to show you what you need to do we need, uh, uh, well, what's in the name, we, we are going to create a route passenger and a route cargo. What you need to do is type in passenger and then not hit OK. That is, yeah, uh, that is my first impulse to hit OK, but that is not all right. You need to hit this button that says hinzufügen or in English add. Then it, it looks like your new route is in a, uh, ended in, in, in a void, in a black hole, but that's not true. It is still there. If you press this uh, drop down, you see it is now in the list. Well, that is not the nicest user interface, but it is no other. Cargo, I, I add it and it is gone, but it is not gone. It is now in the list, as you can see. So now I can hit OK. Step 1 is done. I have created new routes. Step 2, I need to allocate my new routes to the trains. Yes, let's do that. Over here we have our little uh, window and I can click my passenger train. And my passenger train, uh, it has a route passenger. Yes. And I now click my cargo train. Yes, I can see over here that is the steam. Well, I'm not going to zoom in again because I found out in the previous video when I uh, am zoomed in and I want to show you something with my cursor here. Then in the zoomed window my cursor is there. So that, that was not very handy. Okay, for the steam I'm going to select cargo. My steam engine is now a cargo train. That step two is done. Now I have to add a memory signal, yes, because in the next step I'm going to add a block, as you can see. And uh, for every block we need a memory signal. So first let's add the memory signal, then we can type it in later in the block. Well, as you can see, I already we had only eight blocks. Uh, oh, well, 
I first have to take care that this one is away because I have one, two, three trains. Yes, we we had eight blocks and I have uh, 12 or 13 of these memory signals, so I already have enough. Uh, I do not have to do that. Uh, step four, add a new block to the block table for our new train type. Yes, that is maybe the most uh, difficult step to understand, but I'll try to explain. We have one block, uh, 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 physically we have one block, but what we are going to do now, we have two train types on that block, and I want them to go to different routes. Well, there's only one way I can define a route, that is to go from block A to block B. So if I now have a passenger train, that should be on a different block, otherwise I cannot give it a different route. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to add a sort of a virtual block. That means I have two blocks, uh, but physically I have only one block. That also means that I need to find a way to uh, reserve, to tell the software that if there is one type of train, a passenger train, that the block, also the other block, the other virtual block, uh, should be reserved. That is what we are going to do in the next step. We have to add a multi-block situation. Uh, I'm going to explain it right now. Let's have a look at the code. Uh, over here we go to the block, that is the exactly the same code as the previous video. We go to the block table and uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit. What we need to do is add a virtual block, that is the block, uh, still block S1, so I'm going to copy this block S1 and well let me add it at the bottom and give it quickly number 9 and that also means that I have to change my block counter to 9 and I am going to give it a different name that is the passenger train block so I already had the S1 block I added an S1 passenger block it has the same signal on yes signal 10 but it has a different memory signal, well my highest number was 27 so I will type in here 28 and also, so that, that is now taken care of, now I'm going to step 5, add multi-block numbers well that is the this situation, I have now a block 7 south 1 and a block 9 also south 1, so that when any train enters the block, it, it should reserve both blocks. So that is where it comes in this multi-block reservation. I have to reserve one other block and it is block number 9. And vice versa, I have to reserve one other block and it is block number 7. And this is where you could make a mistake easily, but I think we did well. We have here uh, block uh, 9 uh, reserved and we have here block 7 reserved well that sounds good because both are S1 I think we did very well here next step uh, modify the route table uh, because we now have uh, a new block for passenger trains yes that is true I want my passenger trains to always go to station north 1, but that is not already uh, taken care of in my route table. Well, I do not really have a new route because I already have a route for south 1 to north 1, but it is now block 9 that it has to do. And block 7, that was my cargo train, that still goes to north 2 or north 3. So actually this is all that I needed to change here, this new block 9, I, I said block 9, always goes to station north 1. I hope you can still follow this. Um, let's have a look at what we need to do. Uh, we have to place an extra sensor on the track for my passenger train, yes. And of course also we have to modify the sensor that is already there to only listen to cargo trains. Yes, that's true, we have two blocks so we need two sensors. 
All right, let's do that. Let's go to 2D mode. Let's have a look. Let's zoom in a little bit. Oops. Uh, this uh, sensor says there is a train available on block 7. Block 7 was my south 1 block. And that should now listen only to cargo trains. Yes. Uh, so I select a route cargo. It only listens to cargo trains. And then I'm going to add a new sensor that only listens to passenger trains. So let's go to the sound uh, sensor. That's the yellow uh, one. Well, let's add one. I hope the direction is okay. It is only for passenger trains and it should uh, jump to the block available 9. So I type in here 9. Uh, it is probably not very well readable on the video. Okay, that's taken care of. Now you could say yes, but we need to do the same thing over here. Well, that's not true. We have we we reserve uh, we we make free block number seven. That is what it says over here. Uh, but you remember that we coupled those blocks here in the in the multi-block situation. We coupled the blocks, so the software will take care of that if it uh, has to set free block number 7, it also sets free block number 9. That goes automatically. So the only thing that we needed to do is to, to say a, a train available for block 7 or a train available for block 9. And we did that with this new sensor we created. So I think that we uh, have covered the complete list and I'm now going to copy this software uh, into this uh, EEP and uh, run it and then uh, have a look if it works. Uh, first uh, we have a look that our memory sensors are all okay and our signals are all okay. Yes, green, green, green. It should uh, be okay. I'm going to run it. Uh, well, the passenger train is leaving, that's lucky. Uh, that means that we can immediately see if it is going to track 1. We can see over here, it has reserved south 1 uh, as it was, but also the new block south 1 passenger has been reserved. That's because this multi-block flag that we set. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, over here it should now run over this new sensor that we created. And that new sensor says there is a block 9 available. Uh, yes, it says south 1 wants to go to north 1. But yeah, the train is not... Yeah, it is available. Uh, let's have a look over here. Yes, it selected north 1. So that seems to work. Uh, I'm glad. That means that we did not make any mistake. Uh, well, we can wait one more time uh, for this steam engine. It has also reserved South 1 and it reserved the uh, South 1 passenger. Yeah, uh, no other train is allowed here. It has reserved two blocks, the two virtual blocks. And let's have a look if that one goes to North 2 or 3. Well, uh, that's not a difficult question because North 1 <laughs> is, is occupied by a train, so it can never select that. Uh, okay, but uh, that's 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 I cannot help that. Let's have a look. This train is already reserved. Uh, yes, there it goes. And now this train is going to trigger the sensor that we said only for cargo. You trigger yourself. There it goes, and it is going to track three, as I can see over here. Well, it all seems to work. Uh, maybe if you uh, uh, try to follow this video and figure it out yourself, then you have to wait half an hour maybe and uh, yeah I'm, I'm I cannot promise that there will never be a mistake but I think it's okay well that was that was that uh, next challenge uh, I think we will do another video that is to have here on station north have a track 3 make it two directional So that this tanker train, this yellow blue tanker train is now always going to track 4. But it could be interesting to also allow it on track 3. While these trains are also allowed on track 3. So we are going to make track north 3 a two directional track. And let's see what we need to do for that. Again, the same software, you don't need to change any line of code. We only are going to uh, mess around a bit with the route table 
and the uh, block table and maybe a sensor and that's all okay thank you for watching bye bye maybe see you in the next video